Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today I'm going to try to address the multitude of questions I've had over my machine. After posting that one video of the basically the overview of my whole setup here, I have just had a multitude of questions, comments in the comment section. I've had some emails that just went on for pages, and which is great. I mean, I'm great glad people are really inter interested in this stuff. And today I just thought instead of trying to do all of it, answer all of it in the comments and in the emails, I was going to try to address it visually because some of it, I mean, it's just very in-depth. Some of these people really probably know a lot more about this than I do. So let's get to it. Okay, so one of the biggest questions I've got is actual measurements. Uh, as I explained before, these are 3 by 3 square tubing, inch and a half by 3 rectangular tubing. All my cross members are inch and a half by three rectangular tubing so I mean that should make it pretty simple on those dimensions. So right here from outside of this post to outside of this post it is 55 inches across. So just the same right here outside of this post to outside of this post 55 inches across. Inside is this rail here is 49 inches so from inside to inside it's 49 inches again inside to inside here we've got a board way inside here 49 inches now then my top rail is 55 inches because I went ahead and capped my uh, uprights on over now this is going to be one of the questions that was addressed here too. Why did I stop right here? Well, when I started building this, I wasn't real sure where exactly how this was going to go. If I had to do it over again, this is one thing I would change. I would go ahead and extend this end rail on out 11 more inches so I could take away all this mess here. This was basically just after I figured out how I was building it, I added on to allow for the motor. So that would be something I'd change on both sides. I would go ahead and extend this another 11 inches on the top rail and extend it out here. It'd make it a lot cleaner look and just be, it would just look a lot better. Now then, the next question I got is why did I use a five foot ball screw when I used a four foot uh, linear rail? You can do that. You can do a four foot linear rail and a four foot ball screw. Two reasons that I did this. One, I did not want to be that confined with space. I mean, I would have to make these exact and my motor would be right behind this. And I mean, I, my spacing would have to be perfect. I wanted a little playroom because like I said, I didn't know how all this was gonna go. This was my first shot at this. Second big reason, I found these on sale for about $20 cheaper than the four foot ones <laughs> because they were an odd, to, I guess to these people, they were an odd size, not size, not something they weren't selling a lot of. So I got them for $20 cheaper per ball screw, probably the biggest reason because <laughs> I was all about saving money where I could. Okay, so next, how far did I go from the floor up? I didn't go a standard height. From the ground to the top of my cross member right here, I went 36 and a half inches to the top of it. I'm cheating there. I've got it written down over here, all my measurements. Uh, to the 36 and a half. Because I knew my whole box from bottom to top being quarter inch uh, plywood, or two by four, three quarter inch plywood, and three quarter inch MDF. I knew I was going to have five and a quarter inches above it. So at 36 and a half inches, it put us up at 41 and a quarter inches. The reason I was happy with that, or I'm sorry, I said 41 and quarter, 41 and three quarters inches. The reason I wanted that height, so I can spin it around here, so you can see, that hits me right here about the waist. Perfect work, work height. And I didn't want to be uncomfortable reaching real hard trying to get to all this stuff. Okay, another another question that was asked is how many cross members did I have? I thought I covered that. I may not have in the first video. 
I've got one. You can see right there is two, three, and then I've got another one on the other end right down here, four. So I've just got four cross members. This box is built sturdy enough that it can support the weight of just about anything, and it stays real solid for me. Okay, so the next question I had was very specific, and basically they were asking how I kept all this square as I was going. They were asking about speed squares, which I've got, about T squares, which you can see mine sitting right over there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of use that off and on, but the main way I got this square is whenever I was welding this up, I went through and tacked every one of my cross members here. And I'm talking just the outside frame. I added the other two in the middle after I had everything welded hard into just a big box. And I just tacked them up to where they would hold. And for lack of a better term, I don't know exactly what it's called. We call it pulling corners. Whenever we build big structures, and I say we, my dad and I built a 100-unit RV and boat storage that I have down south of town. And so what I mean by pulling corners is I would go to that far corner over there. See if I can zoom in a little bit. Go to that far corner, and I will go to right on that corner, which I'm not doing a very good job, which I know happens to be from that corner over there, Back over to this corner here, to this inside corner, is 69 and a half. So I do the same on that side. And I measured from that corner all the way across to this corner until I got it to be 69 and a half. Which means that you just kind of, you just move it around until you get the measurements exactly right. And when I did get them exactly 69 and a half on both corners, I tacked them. And so then I just walked around this thing all the way around it. Just tacking a couple of times, tacking a couple of times, tacking a couple of times. And I did that till basically I had about five tacks, five to, I don't know, five, six, seven tacks on each side till it was fairly solid. And then I would come to one side and do, uh, do a bead, do a solid bead, and walked around doing that until I got all the way around my rectangular tubing. The reason I did that for the cooling, heating, and expansion of the metal and by doing that, it stayed very, very square throughout the entire process. So then when I added my other cross members, I really didn't have a problem. Okay, so now one thing I would change on the frame that I hadn't foreseen when I was building it is I did go ahead and make this cross member, all the cross members, 49. I think I would go ahead and bounce those up to about 58 inches which seems like a huge difference. It is a huge difference. It would make it quite a bit wider. Reason being is up here on my gantry. Whenever this comes across, you can see it better here on the other end. When this comes across, you can see that my bent is here. Okay, so right here in the center of my spindle, look how far it is out here to this gusset. So I've lost, oh, probably five inches uh, on this side. In fact, I happen to know it's five inches because my width that I can cut is 38. So if I would have bounced this rail over here out another five inches, this could have gone oh at least three more inches out. You're not going to get a perfect four foot because you're going to lose some space because of where your glides are located. But I would have probably gained three inches on each end, no doubt, because it would allow this to slide further because as it is now this is like a hard stop whenever this comes up and hits it it's just going to stop right there whether I want it to or not so that is definitely a change I would make but again hindsight I didn't know what I was getting into so it'll be something that for the future if I was to ever rebuild or making huge modifications to this it would probably be something I would change around okay so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the gantry these are two one and a half by three inch rectangular tubing. They are spread from outside to outside eight inches. So the way I've done that is I just put some spacer metal in here and just welded it up. It is 60 inches long. That way I had good spacing on both sides so I could put my plates with my glides under it. And I just set those right down on top of it and bolted them in. And 
for the most part, this worked out really well. This is one of the things I would make a large change if I was to do this over. I mean, you can see I added my motor mounts here and put them here. This one obviously didn't work out perfect. Was through some of the welding, I got a little uh, stretch or expansion with the when I heated it up pretty good. It still holds it nice and level and solid. On the other side, you'll see that I just put a little clip out here. I just put a little piece of flare metal. It holds perfect. I mean, it's great. It works wonderfully. But the reason I would make a large change to this, give me a little visual aid. I've got it set out here flat like this. Now, you'll see the problem because y'all never see this come down here. Well, when I bring it here, my glide is right there at the end of the rail. Look at all the space I'm losing. And then on front of it, I've got a motor out there. So overall, I lose like almost 14 inches of table space. So right there on my 48 inches, I'm down to 30, 32, 33 inches is about where I'm at. Lengthwise, what I can cut. Simply because I've taken it away with all of this from here to right out here in the front, I've taken it away. So where I would make my change is I would take this gantry and turn it up on its side so these rails right here that are running just like this way would be side by side like that and flat my plate like this plate here that plate up under there would be flipped up on side that would be flush up against the plate then I would lose I probably would if I would do it that way I would probably gain nine inches and that's huge I mean that it greatly increases what I could do on this table I didn't do that way I mean I didn't I had never built something like this so I didn't really know that would be a huge issue until now and it is and so you know hindsight yeah I should have seen that but I didn't and then the other thing I'm getting blasted on <laughs> is my gussets <laughs> There are these pieces of half-inch plywood. I'm not even sure they're absolutely necessary because I do not get a whole lot of flex in that. I welded up a metal bracket that holds that uh, whole Z slide, holds it in place. But maybe. I mean, it might, I might get some flex. I ought to watch and see how much flex. I mean, as you can see, right, I'll zoom in there. You can see my tolerance is pretty tight right there. I've got it real tight right between there. Trust me, at some point, I am going to make a change. I don't know whether it's going to be metal. I don't know whether it's going to be a hardwood that I'm going to use on those. But at some point, yes, I will change that. Right now, there's no big plan for me to make that kind of modification. I mean, I'm just still learning with this thing. I'm having fun with it as much as it is. And like anybody else, I'd love to have a 5 by 10 table. A industrial made 5 by 10 that's super fancy, but... I don't have the money. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not a rich guy, but I love the machine the way it is. I'm having fun with it now. And guys, if there's any questions you have over this thing, please don't hesitate to ask. I mean, I've gotten plenty of comments that were just blasting me over how it's built, and I'm sure those guys are the ones that are the experts on it, I, but I am not. So, and I'm sure, like, sure I'm not going to claim to be. I'm having fun with it. I'm making a lot of cool stuff. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. So, guys, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.